Aloha. Here we are at Think Tech Hawaii Studios in downtown Honolulu, and I'm Wendy Lowe. I'm your friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live every other Tuesday, so I get one Tuesday off, um, uh, two Tuesdays off a month. So that helps me a lot because I need to find more great friends like I have right here today. I'm going to introduce you to my dearest friend, my dearest newest friend. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're, our topic will be on a discussion with Helen Hyden. And as you recall, she was my host and guest along with our director of the station, Jay Fidel. And I just want to say, she's back. All right. And so I was watching over when I was in San Francisco and I was so excited that Helen and Jay had such a great time. And I said, you know what? I want to have some fun with my friend. And so I said, Helen, would you come back today and share your journey? Because it was such an impactful journey that I need others to really realize, you know, Helen looks like the perfect health, the epitome of perfect health, always laughing, always bubbly and just just dynamic in Every day, as soon as you wake up, as I mean, we were together until like midnight yeah. last night, bubbly as heck, having a great time with life. But we're going to deal, dive right into her heart and her life, and she's going to show us a little bit about what she truly experienced. And so I want Helen to share with us her journey towards wellness and optimal health, because she has a great one, and um, we're still on that journey to get her to better and more optimal health. So our takeaway from today's discussion is that you too can take your health back one day at a time. So joining me today is my newest best friend, my BFF, Helen Hyden. Welcome, Helen. Thank you, Wendy, so very much. <laughs> it's an absolute joy to be with you today. Thank you so much for asking me to be on your show. Again. Again. And I will again. <laughs> but mahalo for being on the show today. And you know, in life, there are no coincidences. Um, I was praying one day and I asked, Keo Kua, I need to, you know, I work so hard. I just need to have some fun in my life. Some crazy, but fun. Okay? I'm going to say that other word. But I, <laughs> <laughs> so I said, I need to have some crazy fun with my life. So can you bring me some joy? I was leaving this Think Tech studio, and this Hapa Holly girl comes walking in. I'm like, hey. And we say hi, and we give each other a hug. And I, I simply ask you, what are you here for, Helen? Yeah, it was, it was such a weird day. I was not even intending to come to the studio. My show wasn't coming on until later the week. And so I came early and uh, I met you for the first time. And it was like we knew each other our whole lives <laughs> already. Yeah, I know. instant, instant. Mm, I yeah. know. And we have been inseparable and <laughs> have had so much fun. And it's been so much fun getting you involved in some line dancing over oh, in Nashville. I know, I know. Yeah. Got my cowboy outfit on, I got my boots on. You got your boots I got on my too. Boots on. And what you call them? Oh. <laughs> dance boots. Yes, dance, they're called dance, dance boots. boots. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I heard you call them earlier, but road stompers. Yeah, yes, there you go. yes, there you go. road stompers. And so I prayed and I asked for somebody to just bring joy into my life and more fun. And she told me what she wants to do in her professional career goals. And one of them is that you wanted to start a nonprofit for vets. Yes. And I said, Hallelujah, you are my next best new friend. And then we got to talking about other things. And then she says, yeah, and I line dance. I'm like, you what? And that was, that was history from there. So we've been going to line dance, yeah, yeah. like on Mondays and Mondays Fridays. Mondays and Fridays, yeah. And you know this show is called Take Your Health Back with Wendy. And so that's part of taking your health back is doing the activities. Absolutely. And line dancing, I mean, for two hours, we, we dance from 7 to 9. And, like and Helen, it's free. It's, it's free. free. So, I mean, being Korean, being Chinese, free. free. What a deal, right? The best price, free 99. So we walk in there at 7, and we get on the floor, and they give us lessons. Well, Helen doesn't need any because she's a <laughs> professional. So they, you know, you go on your merry way. But for us, the newbies, and I invite all of you down, just come and partner with me because I'm there and, and learning each song and each step. So partner with me, and when you get better, you hang out with Helen. And for two hours, that's what we do. 
Yeah, and right. it's a great mindfulness exercise because I tried the traditional mindfulness practice, the um, yeah, I don't do I that. I, yeah, yeah, I don't do that very well. You know, focus on a flower for five minutes and, you know, whatever. No, I don't do that kind of mindfulness. Yeah. My mindfulness is on the dance floor. Heck yeah. Yeah, five, you know, two hours solid dancing and just really spending time with quality people. Mm -hmm. You don't have to drink. It, it's a bar, no smoking. It's by the water. It's beautiful. Come down to Nashville's. Um, uh, Waikiki at Aloha Tower. They moved years ago and just come be part of us Monday nights and Friday nights. And you know, um, for you single women out there, I mean, it's 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 a great deal because when you line dance, you're like, what does it say? Line dance. You're not partnered up. You're lined up. And so there's no real physical contact unless you want it. But that's an option, right? And yes. so we get in there within the first 15 minutes, we're like sweating already. We're working up a sweat. We're being very physical. And that's part of wellness, being and doing the activity and not just sitting down all day on the computer watching TV. So that's part of it. And I really want to encourage all of you because we're giving you an open invitation. Absolutely. Come on down. Helen is the best host. <laughs> the, the teacher there is Donna. 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 And yep. I tell you, but enough about that. Yep. So Helen, just um, reintroduce yourself sure. to the audience. Sure. Tell us a little bit about Helen. Sure. I'm uh, 51 years old. Um, I'm the biggest misconception publicly what a disabled veteran should look like and act like. So I've been a disabled vet since my early 20s. You know, and I started having health challenges then. And when I hit 40, I became diabetic and I had hypothyroid issues, started getting sicker more often. By the time I was 45, I had two heart stints. Mm -hmm. uh, people thought for a long time, for a year, they thought I was just having panic attacks. Mm -hmm. And it turned out I had a 95% block and an 80% block. So they stented the two heart, two mm -hmm. heart stents. And then uh, as time went on, I started having more problems, ischemic colitis, you name it. it, it it's been crazy. So wow. I just want to show you, this is my bed at Tripler. I swear, I think they have my name on it. Um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and that's not a that, happy that, face. That is my most <laughs> funniest picture because I'm like, you know, to be vulnerable and share some of these pictures with the audience, it's me with no makeup. It's at my most vulnerable time. But I want people to understand, when you see people out walking about, you don't know their journey, what they're going through right. health-wise. You just right. don't. I present very happy and healthy and bubbly, like you said, right. but uh, underneath it, I'm still going through medical challenges, right. right? But you know what? You take one test at a time, one step at a time, one diagnosis. And one thing I learned from the VA mental health side, mm -hmm. we'll talk about later, is the, the diagnosis is not you. It does mm -hmm. not define you. Right. It is a condition that you right. have to learn to overcome or right. deal with. Right. So the second slide I want to show you, this, this happened this September. This was my latest and greatest. <laughs> it's me with Bell's palsy. Okay, you win. <laughs> you know, I woke up. Wow. Helen. I woke up and I look like that. And, wow. and I, I couldn't believe it. I thought I was having a stroke. Exactly. Right? It looks like a stroke. It does. Uh, went to Tripler again. And sure enough, they tested me for stroke. But I had a neurologist that said, if you can do this, right. this is fine motor right. skills. It is not a stroke. Mm -hmm. And he says Bell's palsy is very common, especially when the weather changes here. Mm -hmm. He sees an increase. And a lot of people don't know what Bell's palsy is, right. but it's a seventh cranial nerve. It gets inflamed. That's all this is. And I took pregnizone, and wow, I was super blessed because uh, I, I got cured, obviously. Right. But it was scary because right. I know people that that has stayed with them. Um, one third, I was told, get worse right. one third stay the same and one third get better wow. i was super blessed to get better wow you know what age were you at that time of the onset of the bell's palsy this was this last september okay. i was 50. 50. so you know the whole idea when i when i start talking with you a lot of your health challenges came about when you turned 40. absolutely and we all know that life changes at 40. i mean from the sight you know you're nearsighted farsighted everything kind of just changes the weight doesn't go off as easily and just different health challenges. So, you know, knowing that, you know, out to the younger audience, I believe at this generation, it's starting even younger than Absolutely. 40. And so we really want to get out the message of people starting to be healthier and take your health back earlier, not wait until 40. Because even for myself at 43, I noticed the weight didn't come off. I felt a little bit sluggish and I thought, what's going on? And I prayed and I said, I need help. And that's when I started changing my lifestyle. And I was 43, and that was, what, in 
16 years ago yeah. that I've made the whole change into my whole lifestyle. And so I really want to encourage more, not wait until we're 40. You younger generation out there started at 30s. Earlier, earlier even, because earlier. Uh, even like diabetes, mm -hmm. huge. You know, you sit on that board and, and you know the challenges this island faces um, with diabetes, right? right. Processed foods. Right. Um, I can tell you a quick story. Uh, a couple years ago, before I came to Hawaii, I decided to change my life. Yes. I did no processed food. I drank water. I, I, I walked two miles a day and danced three nights a week. And in four months, I lost 55 pounds. Wow. And reversed my diabetes. You know, but as I get older, like you said, the weight, does, weight doesn't come off as mm -hmm. easily. I got sick, gained some weight back. And now I'm trying to work my way the other way. Mm -hmm. But it's just getting early testing, getting early detection, awareness, awareness mm -hmm. education. education. Absolutely. Right. And, you know, you hit it right on the nail right there. You know, although you're diagnosed, you don't have to accept it and live with it. It's not your, your life. So exactly what you said, Helen, you were diagnosed, yes. You then, you dealt with it, and then you did, you took some action. You danced. You danced like there was no tomorrow. <laughs> and then you had fun. You laughed. Absolutely. Okay? So that laughter in itself is a healing process, along with the physical activity that you uh, in, in, endured. And then you change your diet. So your lifestyle, your diet, everything changed up. And then, are you diabetic-free? Not yet. Not yet. Not okay. yet. I'm working on it. Yes. And so with the weight loss, I will get diabetic free. Yes. And I know that is to come. Right. Uh, my heart, I'm having some more challenges, and that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, worst case scenario, we'll face it if and when it comes. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I learned throughout this health process is don't go internet searching for <laughs> answers and diagnoses because you'll find tons. And just listen to your Too doctors, do the test that's in front of you, mm -hmm. you know, and work your way through the process because you can really scare yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did originally. But now I trust my care team. I have a whole team and we just take it step by step mm -hmm. because we spend so much energy and time on what ifs right. that it could never be. What if it isn't, right? right? We don't right. think like that. We think right. what if, right? right? And so now I just want to encourage people, just, just take it slow, mm -hmm. take it one step at a time. Exactly. And even if it's worst case, like I could be facing open heart surgery. Even if it's worst case, I have support. Right. I have my, you know, my Ohana family here. Mm -hmm. I have my son and daughter-in-law. I have John. Everybody's here to support me, and I'm not walking this walk alone. Right. And that's the other thing line dancing did. It gave me a community yes. of support. Yes. Oh, Ohana. Yeah, Ohana. Yes, yes. <laughs> Ohana family. Uh -huh. Yes. And they, they've just been phenomenal. And they check on me. They always make sure I'm going to be there. They ask about me all the time. It's a wonderful feeling. Right. This is the type of caliber of people that right. we Right. I mean, that's the, you, everyone knows that we all need a buddy, a buddy in life, whether you have a whole line of buddies or a buddy, someone that holds you accountable and that you can hold that person accountable as well. It doesn't have to be a boyfriend or a nope. husband. It can be a best friend. It could be a coworker, but somebody that you could just, you know, that knows you well enough that if something looks different about you, they, they'll recognize it. That's and right. They'll, they'll say, hey, are you okay today? And that's what we all need to do is really just take time to build on these kinds of relationships. Because if not, who's watching out for who? We're right. so busy living life and wondering what if. So we really need to stay tuned to ourselves and people immediately around us that we love and we care for. Yeah, and be honest with the people that you're around, right? Mm -hmm. Say, hey, I have these challenges and these struggles, mm -hmm. and this is what I need from you if you see me start behaving or acting this way, you know, to try to mitigate or lessen, especially in a public setting. Right. Because I know as a disabled vet, I face some challenges publicly that I have to be kind of cautious about. And so I tell people around me all the time, I'm very honest and say, hey, you know what? If I start getting a little agitated or anxious, get me a glass of cold water. And right. say, Would you like something cold to drink? And I found that that grounds me and it right. comforts me. And so you just work with the tools that you have. That's so important, Helen. You know, you've defined knowing and getting to know yourself. And that's so important because a lot of times we're so busy, we don't even know the signs of that's ourselves. Right. So how can we share that with others? And how can we even detect that in others when we are not even mindful of ourselves? So that's very, all these little tidbits out there, listen in, write it down, watch this video again, because you're gonna learn so much from Helen Hayden. Looks perfectly bubbly, young, best, best friend here. But there are some still hidden issues Absolutely. that she's dealing with. And we're going to dive more into that as we return from our break. We'll be right back. Aloha. This is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, 
Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome uh, studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. <laughs> Aloha and welcome to At the Crossroads. I'm your host, Keisha King. You can catch me every Wednesday, alive at 5. I'll see you there. Aloha. Here we are with Helen Hayden a returnee <laughs> and soon to be a host of her own show again. But we're so excited because she has a health journey that really wanted to bring um, to you again. Because as I keep saying to my best friend here, she looks like the epitome of health, bubbly, cheerful, always smiling. But inside, there's still some health challenges that she needs to um, face and deal with and conquer. And the main thing is that she's aware of these things going on within her. And she's making a change in her lifestyle and changes that I'm so happy for you about. She's doing the actions and the activities, which is physical activity. She goes out line dancing two to three times a week for two to more hours a night. And that's exactly what we should be doing. And it doesn't cost anything because it's at Nashville's and it's free. And she has a good time. And she has an Ohana a support system, a line of buddies around her to get her through the night, to just put her in a great spirit and a mood, so the next day she even starts it off a better Helen. Excellent. So welcome back, Helen. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah. So, you know, I wanted to just share with, uh, share with your audience, what is your ethnic background? Oh, I'm half Korean. My mother's Korean. I was born in Korea. Uh -huh. My father's a white boy from West Virginia, oh. Army, and uh, I traveled, and then I joined the Army, and wow. never thought for a minute that I would ever become a disabled vet. Right. I, I was a dental lab tech in the Army, and when I asked people, you know, what kind of disabilities you think a lab tech gets, and I don't have any of those. It was mm -hmm. not about that. Right. Basically, my challenges started with the military mm -hmm. because uh, I was misdiagnosed. I was not treated for endometriosis, mm -hmm. which led to very big complications down the road. Uh, for the grace of God, I have my son, but after six months after he was born, I had to have a complete hysterectomy, wow. and it was Army negligence. Wow. And so that helped start the journey of understanding my uh, benefits from the VA. Right. Uh, I had a service officer that helped me mm -hmm. and uh, educated me. They took me under their wing and really helped me in my journey. And so for 25 years, I've been a veterans advocate helping others, just wow. passing it along, you know. And that's what attracted me to you. I mean, when you told me, I want to save a vet a day, I'm like, whoa, you're my best friend. I found my buddy because that's the you know, the, the area that I really wanted to address as well. And with your passion and your knowledge and your, your experience, I was just so blessed to receive you as a friend. And I know that this is just the beginning that we're going to make headway through the, uh, with the vets and making their lives more purposeful. Yes, and definitely. I think that's your heart as well. Definitely, because what I found is I've been on an island since August of 2016. There's a lot of misinformation out there. And I tell everybody, you know, go to the source, va.gov. The websites are wonderful. But I wanted to show them, in case they did not know, mm -hmm. to go to the <laughs> VA uh, Pacific Island Healthcare System. Mm -hmm. They call it the ACC. Oh. That's the picture of where we all go to get the health care that we need. Building. The big pink building, <laughs> but it's on the left side of Tripler when you face Tripler. Mm -hmm. You go around the corner, there's a parking garage across the street. And that's where you, that's where all the health care is taken care of. Wow. And a lot of people get very confused right. because there's two components at Tripler for VA. That's the health care side. Mm -hmm. Then they have the benefits side, which right. is the next slide, in the E-Wing. Mm -hmm. And that's where you go. And that's when you first come up the hill, past the gate guards, and you take the left. You can't go any straighter. You take the left mm -hmm. at the end, and it's the first right right there. It's the end of the building. Oh. It's the first thing you will see. It's E-Wing. That's where the benefit side is, and that's where the service 
organizations are. And that's where people need to go to get educated on benefits. Right. Uh, I tell people all the time, VA is great, don't get me wrong, but these service organizations, American Legion, Disabled Veterans, Purple Heart, um, Wounded Warrior, you know, VFW, they're all there, the state of Hawaii. They can help them, educate them on their benefits, help them fill out the paperwork, and if something goes wrong, then they're there to advocate on their behalf. If you go to the benefits side, it's you and the VA. Mm -hmm. You don't have that advocate with you. So I highly encourage everybody to get an advocate. Wow. Pick so, one. you know, when you go there to either side, the lines must be very oh, yeah. long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's take a ticket, take a seat kind right. of concept. Hurry up to wait. Yeah, yeah hurry up to mm -hmm. wait. Sometimes the, you wait three, four hours. I've been there with uh, clients that have waited a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, they're doing the best they can right. with the staff that they have. Right. And they are hiring all the time. The VA has wonderful help. Uh, they have wonderful you know, packages, um, packages for mm -hmm. employment, right. and they have uh, employment fairs all the time. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes peeled. They hire 30, 40 veterans at a time. My fiance, John, mm -hmm. went to one of those. I went with him, and I watched the process. It was, they screened him, they took his resume, he got offered a tentative job in two hours flat, and within three weeks, he was already working at the VA. Wow. It was amazing process. Wow. Well, they're looking, and that's, that's right. the need is there. So they need to fulfill that component so that they can process more Absolutely. and get these vets, these veterans, what they deserve, the benefits that they deserve as they defended our country. Yeah, and it's earned benefits. Right. And a lot of people don't understand mm -hmm. that. If it's in your medical records, you've already earned it. Now right. we just got to put the pieces together to make sure that you understand that component. And on my show, when I do Voice of the Veteran, mm -hmm. I'm going to walk people through the step process yes. on what they need to gather and how to approach that, that part of it, the veteran benefit part mm -hmm. of it. And maybe I'll have some guests that can explain it even further. Right, That'd and be you great. know, Helen, again, mention to the audience, what is the date and time of your show? Yes, so starting on the 7th of April at three o'clock, I, I get every two weeks, mm -hmm. I'll be doing a show. From, and from May? From, from May 7th May on, 7th, yep. Right. And this is, my show is a little bit different. I really wanna hear the voice of the veteran. Mm -hmm. This is our show, the way I look at it. I'm just the host. Right. If you want to be on this show and talk about stuff, please contact me at the show and I'll gladly bring you on. This is uh, ours, just like the VA is ours. Right. If we don't use the services, we lose them. Right. So it's, I tell every veteran, please, no matter what experience you have, don't take no for an answer. Let's try to find a way to make it work. Let's work with the staff there. Let's make sure that you get the healthcare needs that you need taken care of mm -hmm. and that brings me you know we talk a lot about physical stuff a lot right. but a lot of people don't know there's oh. a whole nother side to me and it's the <laughs> mental side and that's no that <laughs> side <laughs> that one's we need a whole hour for yeah, that one right. and so i just want to touch quickly wendy you know a lot of people will talk all day long about their physical stuff mm -hmm. but the minute you yeah. want to talk about mental health they want to clam up and shut down no. and it, it this is not a thing of shame no. this is not a thing of guilt no. or embarrassment that we have 22 veterans a day dying from suicide we need to start talking talk therapy has been phenomenal for me mm -hmm. i've tried the medication i'm not saying everybody works but right. for me it worked right the medications did not it was zombie land mm -hmm. i hated that it right. took away my personality. Right. So I worked with my providers and said, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else? Sure enough, talk therapy. Perfect. And I have learned that this is like, <laughs> I don't talk enough, but I learned that <laughs> I learned that I like talk therapy because really, it helps process. Helen? I know, right? I, I mean, you know, with all the health <laughs> issues that you faced yeah. and then all the other issues of being in the military and being a military family, um, I know your therapy was your self-induced, and it has a lot to do with the ability to share, to reach within and share the good, the bad, the light, and the dark. And so that's really critical. So you have that gift. Many people out there, they, they can't. They can't share their, their shame, or they're just, they just don't know. They're confused. They think it's their fault. They don't understand. Sure. So what you're going to bring to the table, what you are bringing to the table when you return back to your show is yes, give them a voice, let them speak out, and then you can help them and direct them in the right path to get healed. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Because, you know, I find that a lot of veterans, once they start talking, 
it'll all come out, mm -hmm. right? But they just got to find that person that they trust. Right. And that's the big key. I found therapy that I trusted. Yeah. I When I landed on island in 2016, I was going through another divorce. I was a hot mess. But you know what? I got connected with the VA mental health, went to day hospital. After that, Dr. Rob over there was phenomenal. After that, I, I went to this program called Tech the empowerment, uh, technical empowerment centers of Honolulu. Mm -hmm. It's at the VA. Mm. Tons of skills, right. tons of support. Right. And, you know, I just can't encourage people enough to utilize these services. Right. Don't be afraid. Right. They even have and guitar. Be patient. Yes, and be patient. be patient. They even have right. guitar lessons for oh. veterans. And probably hula. They, right? they do yoga. They yes. do art therapy. Yes. It's not what you think anymore. Right. It's not like the old school VA. Right. This is amazing, right. dynamic programs. Yes, but and I know we talked about this before, and a lot of people, they, they're not patient. So they go in and they want immediate response. And like, oh, you know, I, I get tired of waiting. And I, I don't have time to wait, but they do have time to wait. It's a process. It is. It's a process. And, you know, we just have to encourage the listeners out there that if you know of a loved one that is experiencing loneliness or PTSD or just anything, that they are looking for services and they don't know of that's out there for them, please tune in to listen to Helen's show and, you know. Send um, me questions, yes. you know, for the show. Email me, send me questions. I would love to uh, just read what you write. But one of the things, the last slide, you did a great segue into the last slide mm -hmm. because uh, this number right here, please make sure you get this number, 1-800-273-TALK. And if you're a veteran, press 1. Anybody can call this. Family member, civilian, if you have a veteran in your life mm -hmm. that is in crisis, call that number. If you are a veteran in crisis, you don't have to be suicidal or homicidal, mm. but they will ask you the first question right. because safety's first right. for you. They need to know what they need to with. know, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to be safe no mm -hmm. matter what. But I personally have called that number when I have insomnia, when I am stressed out about my health issues, when I'm stressed about my relationship issues. I call that number. They are always on your side. Wow, you've got another buddy. Yeah. This is what it's all yeah. about. So, you know, Helen, you've been uh, very privileged to understand what services are out there. So you tap into that. And so the other part now is you want to give back and you want to make sure that they receive the same help that you had. And so there's one more component of your life that I really want to dive into. I know that you're on your health journey. So your mind, body and soul, you know, you're working, you're working on that. And now what makes Helen happy? That's, that's the next part of uh, continued healing. What makes you happy? And what are you going to do now that you're at this chapter of your life and you're going to close that part and you're going to dive into an, another chapter? Sure. Tell I'm them about it. I'm super excited. <laughs> uh, so I am going to fulfill a lifetime dream of mine and start <laughs> producing kimchi. Yes. Everybody giggles and laughs, but I got to tell you, my mother made good kimchi, but I make better. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, uh, Kimchi Queen is being launched very soon in the uh, future, and I'm so super excited because it's a superfood, yeah, and it aligns with everything. Yep, it aligns yep. with everything that I'm doing. And when when people eat my kimchi, the shredded especially, they seem to love that one the best. When someone comes up to you and says, "This is the best I've ever had in my life." You made a difference in that person's life. Yes. And that yes. aligns with what I really believe in, whether wow. it's through veteran care, whether it's through sharing food, sharing line dancing. I want to give that person that gift that I got, right? right? That amazing feeling of just wowness. Yeah, and so that's the whole thing. When you eat her kimchi, you're not just eating, eating probiotics. You're eating all her love and everything. Her mana is coming out into this kimchi. And that's going to go into you. And so you're going to be joyful, happy, and bubbly just like, my buddy over here. So, but you know, Helen, time's up. Yep. We just oh, so talked for two hours so and it's, it's done right now. So we have to say bye-bye to all the audience and just- Thank you, Wendy. Thank you so much, BFF, wing, wing woman. <laughs> no, wing, wing woman. woman. But, so we'll say goodbye to you and we'll look for you on your show on Wednesdays uh, at- Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday starting May 7th. Oh, Tuesday on May 7th at- 3 o'clock. 3 o'clock. So we'll see you then. Hello, everyone. <laughs>